Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this incredible panel of women that are so inspiring. I've worked with UNICEF now for about 12 years and uh, mostly with education and rights for girl children. Um, whether it was my travels around India, Jordan recently uh, to the Zatari camp uh, with Syrian refugees, whether it was Zimbabwe where the numbers are staggering, one out of three girls under 18 has been sexually violated, 100%. Um, South Africa, um, violence is, is, comes out in so many forms, whether that's sexuality, whether that is um, physical violence, emotional violence. Um, the one thing that I have seen that usually works within, within communities is to be able to empower women to be, and young girls, young girls giving them the right to tell them it is okay, especially in developing countries like you were speaking, ma'am, right now, about um, if a girl wears a certain outfit, she's judged for it and she asked to be raped. Or if uh, a girl hits puberty, she will not be allowed to go to school anymore because she might be raped. Or it might, and that will bring honor, that will bring dishonor to the family. These are certain little things that are set in mindsets which have been for thousands of years been told to us as women that we dictate our intention or everything that we, we wanna achieve by the clothes that we wear or the way that we speak or how loudly we speak or what point we're trying to make. So what has worked is empowering these young girls and boys in schools in, in, um, by telling them that a, a real man is not violent and a real woman is not tolerant of it. Because what happens is society tells boys that it's okay to be violent and then women just become tolerant. And when these girls are empowered, I've seen so many kids that I've met who go into their own communities and despite of being ousted, despite of being told that they're too much women and they're bad influences and um, they will probably you know, turn the other girls into uh, bad influences, they go out there, knock on doors and make the change. So we need to start young. We are not gonna be able to change the mindsets of older people, unfortunately. And starting young, how do you get girls and boys to be more engaged in this fight, both, both girls and boys? Well, again, I think, you know, the fact that everyone sitting in this room, we are, they are people who are influencers, governments, people in higher positions and platforms. Once you, like in India, for example, we have incredible laws that have been passed for the, um, for the protection of women. Um, which local and international communities have pushed the government to do. And now implementation is what is important. You see young people with the use of social media, with the use of being aware, socially aware, by parents teaching their children, um, by making them, like how Malala's father addressed us and he said, my father was exactly the same. He told me that no one will ever tell you to not have an opinion because that's the one thing that a, that's taken away from a woman is her opinion and her right. And my father empowered me to be able to sit in front of you and, and say anything that I want from my experiences. And it's that with, with the internet, with the social media that we have, it can become something which is horrible, but it can also become a boon by us being able to, these kids are dictating and teaching themselves. We're not gonna be able to tell them this is how life is led. They're discussing it on their own. They're on their phones, they're on Facebook, whether I was at the Dari camp, whether I was in, in Rajasthan in India, whether I was in Zimbabwe. So the access and the information that we provide to them is very important. And UNICEF and so many other NGOs and amazing organizations are doing such great groundwork, which you said, going into the field and actually changing mindsets.